When you say the word tattoo, most people think body art. You might picture a World War II sailor with a heart on his bicep inscribed with the word mother. You might see a tattooed lady from an old-time circus, or you might think fondly of your favorite barista. But chances are you don't hear this. That's the sound of a different type of tattoo. Hi, I'm Mignon Fogarty, and this is a selected segment from the Longer Grammar Girl podcast. You can find the whole thing here, but we've taken this segment and jazzed it up for you with images and example sentences. You might be surprised to learn that the word tattoo has two different meanings with two different origins. The first refers to images or patterns permanently drawn on the skin. These are created by puncturing the skin and adding ink. Sometimes this is done with needles, sometimes with bones or thorns. Sometimes the ink is introduced into a simple pinprick, other times it's added to a scratch or even a knife slash. But whether you think tattooing is cool or creepy, humans have been doing it since the dawn of civilization. We've found tattoos on Egyptian mummies from 2000 BC. We've also found what might be tattoos on the Iceman, the mummified human found in the Alps and radiocarbon dated back to 3000 BC. The Iceman's back, left leg, and right ankle are marked with short blue lines. Now, these may be scars from primitive surgeries, or they may be proper tattoos. Although this practice is ancient, the word tattoo itself came into English in the 1700s. That's when James Cook, a British captain, undertook three expeditions to the Pacific Ocean. He found and charted New Zealand, accidentally landed in Australia, and visited Jakarta and Tahiti. He brought back huge amounts of navigational information to England, and he brought back the Tahitian word tattoo, T-A-T-A-U, meaning to mark. He recorded this as tata in his journals. Over time, this became tattoo in English and tattoo in French. One final note, the original Tahitian word may be an onomatopoeia, a word that imitates the sound it represents. In this case, tat may refer to the tapping sound a mallet makes when striking a needle made of wood or bone. Now, let's jump to the other meaning of tattoo. Remember this sound? That's a military tattoo. It's a signal sounded by a drum or bugle and used to recall soldiers to their quarters at night. This version of tattoo comes from the Dutch phrase do den tap to, meaning to close the tap, as in to close the tap on a keg. You see, back in the 1600s, much of Europe was tied up in the Thirty Years' War. Perhaps because the war stretched out for so long, soldiers would often wander off to their local pubs during the day. In the Netherlands, drummers were sent into town every evening at 9.30 to call them back. This drumbeat was also a signal to innkeepers, turn off your tap and kick the soldiers out. That's where do den tap to, close the taps, came from. Over time, that was shortened to tap to, and eventually tattoo. Today, these kinds of tattoos are still used in the military. On U.S. Army bases, for example, a bugle signals key events throughout the day. Reveille, played at 6.30 a.m., means it's time for morning roll call and to raise the flag. Retreat, played at 5 p.m., signals the end of the duty day and the lowering of the flag. Call to quarters at 10 p.m. means head back to your quarters for the night. Tattoo at 10.45 p.m. means turn out the lights within 15 minutes. And taps at 11 p.m. means lights out. The meaning of a military tattoo has also expanded over time to include military music in general. This type of music is celebrated at festivals around the world that gather bagpipers, military bands, drill teams, and fife and drum corps. The most famous may be the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. This month-long festival kicked off in 1950 and has been held yearly ever since. So that's the skinny on the two types of tattoo. One marks your skin, the other marks the end of the day. That segment was written by Samantha Enslin, who runs Dragonfly Editorial.
You can find her at dragonflyeditorial.com. If you like the video, check out the whole podcast this week. The second segment is about some famous writers and how they dealt with aging. Thanks to the whole Quick and Dirty Tips team for help with the audio and the video this week. And thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.